Right guys, I'm here at Jakati Cambridge with Alex. We can't see anything because the sun, I made him stand with the sun in his eyes as per usual. Yeah. We're here with the uh, Jakati Scrambler 1100. Alex is going to run over some bits and bobs about the bike that I have no idea about. So uh, over to you my man. Sure. So this is called the 1100 Special. It's uh, special in the same way that the 800 is like the classic. So uh, the special comes with the spoke wheels, uh, a dedicated sort of like a quilted seat. So it's more harking back to the uh, original Scrambler. Uh, you've also got, obviously got a dedicated paint job and a few other nice little individual styling touches just to make it special, if that makes sense. So yeah. there's three models in the range. This kind of sits in the middle. You've got the, obviously the icons, which come in a variety of colours. So the icon, which actually reminisces the same as the 800. Um, the special, which is, as you see it here, and obviously the sport, which has the own suspension and a few other little side bits just to make it look more sporty. So uh, a couple of differences, changes between the 800 and the 1100. One being the first bike to incorporate the Scramble Range to have Corning ABS. So now Corning ABS is here. And also the ride by wire throttle. So you've got your three rider modes as you would get with most of the regular Ducati range with Ducati safety pack. Great. So they're named slightly differently. So you've got um, active, journey uh, and city. And they all roughly do the same things, the rest of Ducati range. So you've got active, which is like sport mode where you've got full power, full throttle response, uh, slightly lower on the traction control, slightly lower on the ABS settings. Um, you've also got a uh, kind of middle of the mode, which is the journey mode, which kind of sets everything to medium with soft throttle response, still full power. And then you've got a uh, city mode, which cuts the power by about 11 horsepower, softens the throttle response off again, and bumps up the traction control, the ABS, etc., just for kind of more safety and also for easier around city town. Yeah, so similar to the lower CC Scrambler. Yeah, but similar. Different. Sim similar in its, its styling, but there are some obviously some very distinctive changes because this is the, the flagship range now. Uh, of the Scrambler range, you've got the 1100cc kind of signify some bits which are kind of cutting edge in the same way like the 1299 was to the 959. Yep. There are some signature features. So one, you've got a bigger tank now, bigger engine now needs a bigger tank. So you've got 15 litres, so it's bigger by 1.5 litres. Just for levers on both sides, so you can now adjust them on both ends, whereas before you could only get that on the 800. Oh yeah. Um, you've now got full comprehensive dash now, so a lot of people criticise the dash, saying it didn't look particularly nice, but actually you've got more information, more information. Is this the same as the other scrambler, the same shape? Yeah, so you've got the round shape, that's roughly the same, it's just okay. the addition of this little side panel here. Um, so you've now got fuel gauge, uh, you've got your mode selectors, information on the traction control, settings, gear position indicator, uh, daytime running light and various other information which you can scroll through, just with the left side leaders. It's a good dash. Yeah. And rev counters underneath, isn't it? There, so yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, so that follows the same as the old scram, so people won't be confused by that. And same with the clock, uh, and obviously the trip information that's all sorts of straightforward. So, stuff. three modes like the other scrambler, is yeah. It, are the modes different? Now, the modes are labeled different, but they roughly do the same sort of things. Obviously, you've got city, which is kind of a low power mode, and then you've got journey, which is kind of mid power mode, and then you've got active, which is like equivalent to the sport mode. But obviously, we're not talking about sports bike, we're talking about scrambler, so they've been labeled differently to kind of signify that brand. But yeah, so as you can see, change it to active, which is full chat. Traction control settings now uh, less, uh, and obviously the throttle response and everything like that, which obviously you can't see from the dash, but we know it's there. Um, so that's what's that. Yeah, that's good, that's a good dash. Yeah, yeah. The levers and the buttons and the bits and bobs you probably signify from sort of Ducati's uh, regular range, like the Monster 81, 950 Monster on Super Sports, they're all the same, so like the rolling starter, where the hazard lights are, daytime running light, all the various different switches. So if anyone's familiar with the with those models, we'll feel comfortable with this sort of bike. And the headlight's different? Headlight is different, yeah. So you still get the halo that goes around the outside and then obviously a different beam, but you've also got this lovely Ducati uh, cross section in the middle. It's cool. That's quite that. nice. You also, another big one, big point for this bike, um, is fully adjustable suspension no matter which model you get. So no matter what model you get, whether it's a sport, whether it's a special, whether it's an icon, We've got fully adjustable suspension, both ends of the bike. So front fork's fully adjustable, rear shock's fully adjustable. That's really, really That's good. That is definitely uh, really good. a good thing. Okay. Now, one of the coolest settings of the special, and it is just for the special alone, obviously you've got the gleaming uh, exhaust down here. What's nice is that when the engine gets, uh, gets used and the engine gets warm and stuff, they actually start to 
uh, if you like, flame fade. So they actually start going sort of darker, sort of bruise, tan, and blue colors. Cool. It's not done many miles, this has it, 50 miles? Yeah, and it's not many. I think the total mileage at the moment is 76 miles, in. so it's still running yeah, it's in. Yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. Little back light, tucked away under there. Yeah, you get a good termy system for this as well. Oh yeah, the shotgun style termies, they have that as a homologate system, but also get the full system. It comes with remat and you get about an extra 4-5% of power, I think it is. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, and torque. Cool. Right, let's get on her and give her a, give her a run. Cool. Hey guys, I'm on the 1100 Scrambler special. I think that's what Alex just said. <laughs> it's great to have Alex to chat about the bike because I have no idea about this Scrambler. I've never ridden a Scrambler before in my life. I don't know why the fuel light's on and it says I've got a quarter of a tank. That's a bit weird. Anyway, let's get some fuel and then we'll have a little ride out and see what's what in the world. Definitely looks good. Yeah, nice bike, seat's comfy. Right, let's see how we get in this petrol cap. That was easy. Oh, I'll put a tenner in. Keep us going. Sorted. Quite like the key, looks good. Right, let's go and pay. Does sound good. Right guys, got some fuel. Just saying, the fuel cap, the detailing's brilliant. The other things I'm starting to notice is I've only been on it a few minutes and the key is a really cool shape as well. So guys, yeah, I guess if you're after a scrambler, I didn't ask him the cost of this compared to the standard one. I'm not sure, but I guess check out the Ducati website for prices. I'm guessing this might be a grand, maybe two grand more. Got to remember this hasn't got a quick shifter, uh, like my monster. I'm going to head uh, back to mine for the, down the country roads just to get a feel for this bike. Feels really comfortable. The seat on this is lovely. I think it comes as standard on this on this special version. Yeah, it sounds good. Oh, guys, excuse the dodgy uh, angle of the camera. There's nowhere else to fit the camera. For a second view, I'll, in this video I won't use that view very much. It was all skew with, but there's nothing else I could do. <laughs> it sounds good. The standard pipes do sound good. Really, really good. Lorry, get over. Get the wrong side of the road. Again, I'm not sure the dash on the standard one, it's missing that little bit there, the little added on bit to the roundel of the dash. Uh, so I guess it's better, there's more information. It's got a little bit of poke. It's good. I've got to remember, I'm used to the Monster, which has got a lot of power compared to this so yeah I'm, uh, there's no point me saying oh it's, it's slower than a monster this and that this is a different kind of bike completely I guess what are the rivals to this bike the BMW Scrambler 
the Triumph Scrambler. I guess they're its main rivals. But this is now, with a bigger engine, it definitely has the power to match the bike. Pardon me, I think the other one was okay as a little bike to whiz around town on the stuff, but this is a bit more of a serious bike. Yeah. I think it's got around 100 horsepower, I might be wrong. It's a tweaked version from the old 1100 Evo Monster. It's the engine out of that, but not as powerful as that. And the tyres on this are those sort of Pirellis that are, I don't know what they're, what make they even are, they're sort of semi off road tyres. Gotta be careful on this because it's only done, it's only done uh, 50 miles, 78 miles. So the tyres are probably just about scrubbed in. But the detail on this, it's got brilliant detailing. Absolutely brilliant. This feels like you could ride this forever. And it's got enough information on the clock, you don't need any more than that. It's got everything you could ever want. The thing with these scramblers, you can do so many things to it to make it your own bike. It's so customizable. Do you know what? This isn't a slow bike. I thought I'd get on this and think it's slow, but it's not. It's definitely got a good amount of power. I'm surprised actually. Way. Right, even at low revs, just then in second, there's no, there's no jerkiness. The, the throttle's in its most violent setting, most responsive, and it's just smooth. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah, definitely the brakes aren't as good as my M50s, but these are the brakes they have on most of the Ducati standard bikes. The Monsters, uh, the Super Sport, yeah, they're good enough, but it just got the feels a bit, a little bit spongy. You have to give them a little bit of a grab to get them to work, but that's okay. That's just a normal set of brakes. And this bike isn't, you've got to remember, this isn't in any way a kind of mon monster. It's not. It's nothing like that. It's completely different. Stay there. Nice, late indicating mate. It's today full of complete idiots. I'm not sure if I like the chrome exhaust pipes because everything else is like brushed uh, aluminium, stainless steel, whatever it is. And then you've got very, very bling uh, exhaust header pipes. But as Alex said, they do, they, they probably, uh, they don't blue off, they're not titanium, but they do change colour when, they, when they've when they been worn a little bit. But yeah, I'm not sure about that. You could fit a really cool termy system to this, it, it sounds good as it is. Yeah, really, really good bike. I think the Ducati, the success of the Scrambler is off the chart. I think they've sold a ridiculous amount of Scramblers. It's got a huge following. I don't think the following in the UK is as big as other parts of the world. I think uh, mainland Europe, uh, America, maybe Australia, they're selling them by the bucket load somewhere. But which country they are selling loads of them, I'm not sure. But I can see the appeal now. I didn't really get the other Scrambler because it was, it was a little bit lacking in power. Great as a first bike. If someone just passed a bike test and want a bike for a year, then the, the lesser powered Scrambler would be a great bike. 
as Alex said the suspension on this is fully adjustable which is pretty cool I think the model up from this has a set of Odin suspension I'm not 100% sure as I said guys I'm sorry I'm not I haven't I didn't know I was going to borrow this bike today while my uh, monster's having a service I thought it was going to be on uh, Super Sport or something else but I got put I got put on this best of the guys it's only just arrived this week so let me have a go on this so I've done no research into the scrambler at all so I'm sorry that I cannot tell you any more about it Alex ran over as much as he could at the start of the video but I guess just check out the old uh, Ducati website for any more information but I'm very impressed this as a first bike especially it's got enough power I think yeah you did be chuffed it's a super sport there you'd be you'd be pleased with this I think it'd be it'd feel good this isn't the sort of bike that you would want a quick shifter on it's not that sort of bike gear, the gear change is smooth as silk the clutch is oh my god it's like you could you could actually work it with your little finger yeah I can it's so light it, the gearbox suits this bike and changing gear on this is part of the experience pulls in fifth gear it just pulls perfectly fine thing is with these bikes as I said you can do so much to them yeah it feels good you know it, it's not the most powerful bike in the world but it feels it feels fine absolutely fine it's a little wind blast but that's that's to be expected there's no screen on this and as i was saying the number plate bracket on this is coming out of the mud guard at the top unlike the the lesser scrambler the, the less powerful scrambler it's got has got a wheel uh bracket with a number plate on so I think once you get a towel tidy on this and a little plate, I think it would look brilliant and a couple of termies sticking out the back. I'm just looking at this. It's the brake uh, cable. I, I just that, that just spoils the front a little bit. I don't know why they couldn't have tucked that somewhere else, but I guess that's uh, just part of the scrambler, part of the bike, part of the appeal. great little bike and I'm only size wise I'm only five foot seven and I've got short legs I'm completely flat footed on this and, and this seat's obviously quite a custom seat that comes with this model uh, and I'm flat footed so anyone that's not that tall this bike would be absolutely spot on I'm going to go on the dual carriageway in a minute which is not what this bike is made for in any kind of way it's meant for these kind of roads little backcountry village roads that you can just burble along on and have a bit of fun it feels light as well for an 1100cc bike I don't know it probably feels I don't know weight wise what it is but it feels similar to the Monster 1200 probably, light, probably lighter because it probably is lighter but yeah, this is great what a cool little bike and I'm not sure what the other models are and what they look like I guess this has got spoked wheels the other ones have probably got forged uh, standard wheels I don't know as I said I am a bit lacking in knowledge on the old uh, scrambler I'm afraid to say but this is just me, no, stay. This is just me giving you my just initial impressions, how I feel this bike feels to me. You get a bit of vibration through the foot pegs and the bars when you're higher up the rev range, but no more, I'd say, than my uh, 
Monster 1200. It's, yeah, it's comfy. It's, it feels good. Oh, I'm in love with this seat. The Monster seat is quite firm and it sort of throws you sort of forward. It's a bit of a pitched angle. This seat's flat. Oh, as I said, I've never ridden a bike like this before. But yeah, guys, any of you with a uh, standard scrambler, if you're looking to change up to the next level, go and test ride this. Because I, I reckon with this, this amount of power, well, I'm not sure where I'm actually going. I think we're going this way. I need to go down the, uh, on the 428. Uh, here we go. Oh, what a glorious day to be out on a bike. I'm so lucky. The bike's having a service, so I had to take it anyway, whatever the weather, and I've got weather like this. Oh, man. It's spot on. Well, I'm on the Scrambler 1100. It's perfect. Gorgeous, gorgeous day. I do like the headlight on this with the LED sort of halo effect around the edge and the cross in the middle. It does look good. Definitely looks, uh, looks sharp. It's good. But they've just got LED bulbs and they're a bit dated now. I think these uh, but lights like this with these strip LEDs are far more modern looking. They look, they look nice. I scared that little dog. <laughs> I revved the, rev the engine and it, <laughs> it got scared, look. Keeps hiding. Right, I did quite a few miles before I went back for lunch. And noticed a couple of things that's, that's probably worth chatting about. It's funny, you can really hear the valves on the exhaust opening and closing from a sort of gurgle sort of burble to sort of nothing and it, you think I thought there was another bike behind me uh, earlier and it was just this change in noise it's got like a dual personality which is just yeah I guess unless you have a straight through system that's how the pipes work but it sounds good uh, brakes did test them out a little bit earlier they're not bad the back brakes not too bad actually at all front one is just what you'd expect on this kind of bike uh suspension is definitely on the softer side you wouldn't i did chuck it around some roundabouts and stuff and it feels really planted it doesn't feel sort of floaty or anything like that. it just feels good and over like these speed bumps like this it's a lot more compliant than my uh, than my monster I take this to about 6,000 revs because it's still running it in. So I'm not giving it full beans. It redlines at about, well, it says 10, but I don't know how far it goes until it hits the rev limiter. So I'm not thrashing it. It revs quite highly in sixth gear. Like I'm in sixth gear now, 60. Still pulls really well. Earlier, a car changed its mind in a roundabout. I was about to go and he came around my way. So I brake pretty hard and the front, because it's quite soft, it did dip down quite a lot. But on roads like this, you can chuck it around these bends and it, it handles brilliantly. It is a Ducati after all. Yes, it's not some crazy sports bike or crazy hyper naked bike. Well, it is a naked bike, I guess. But for what it is, it is good. But yeah, when I braked hard at that roundabout, I could tell that just can feel the front dipping right down. I guess you can adjust the suspension. It's fully adjustable. Obviously, I haven't touched it, but I guess that might take a little bit of the softness out of the front. But as I said, it's not the kind of bike you want to set up. So it's, it's all firm and, and hard. It, it's not like that. 
it's a fun do-it-all kind of bike you could, I guess you could take this tour in you could whack some panniers or a big bag on the back it's so comfortable you could go off to Europe on this I reckon no problem you'd keep up with the boys on this the engine's definitely powerful enough no question no I'm definitely uh, impressed I'm very impressed it does what it says on the tin yeah guys I'm not sure on paintwork if you can get it in different colours I have no idea you'll have to check out the Ducati website because I didn't ask Alex I forgot oh come on girls what are you doing are you going across the crossing or not no just you know oh another thing what I'm remembering as I'm on it the mirrors are amazing they just look a bit stupid they are so big they're I think that one's looks bigger than that one but it's my imagination I'm sure but they they don't vibrate at all uh, and they're huge but they look a bit dodgy but as we know you get some bar ends on these get some rhizomas get some little bar ends some little drop down ones or ones that are higher up but I'll sort that out in no time no problem at all see third gear pull so well no issues at all the drivetrain on it is just yeah it's smooth as silk no drive no drive line shunting it's just brilliant oh, I like the little dash yeah it's a bit of a dull non colour screen but you know what it says all you need it to say and it's way clearer than the screen say on the 959 the old digital screen on that it's a smoother nicer digital screen I guess I've done about 50 miles on this today which isn't that many but it's given me a good idea about how a scrambler feels and I'm really impressed definitely impressed And the accessories catalog is humongous you can do some serious serious things to this it's very 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 uh, customizable it's got that sort of fun youthful sort of feel to it that an old fart like me probably doesn't get but yeah I, I just think if you want one bike that does everything I guess this is this is pretty up there it's like the super sport but as we know one bike doesn't do everything hence why some of us have got four three two different bikes uh, which if we're lucky enough to have then that's uh, that's great I was doing with the uh, gearbox is flipping on the down change to just match the revs a little bit but don't need to do that it's not that sort of gear I'm just used to doing that when I uh, ride my Africa twin the gearbox is is good very 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 smooth probably could have eked a little bit more power out of this engine uh, being the old Evo monster engine oh god damn but I guess there's no point giving it too much power it starts to get into uh, well into monster territory 821 and stuff like that I don't know but this is a little fun bike is absolutely brilliant right I'll run through what I like and what I don't like about it right what I like about it styling is pretty cool it looks good uh, the screen's good the gearbox is brilliant could do with a bit more power but uh, you'd get used to it and I think it's okay uh, 
me tricking up with some Rizoma parts and some performance parts, well, Ducati uh, scrambler parts. Yeah, it's a great bike. I, I honestly can't really fault it. Things like the, the, the big mirrors, they're huge. The, things like that you can change. It doesn't matter, the ride quality is great. It's soft. You would not want to hammer it down some bad hairpin bend road. That, that would not probably end very well. But, yeah, it, it dives and it's a bit soft, but that's, that's the sort of bike it is. It's to get your jeans on, your Kevlar jeans, your, your barber jacket, your open face crash helmet with your sunglasses on, and bumble down to the pub. So that's what it's about. But you could use it for other things too. It's a, just a bike that does pretty much everything that you want it to do. I'm very, very impressed. Way more than I thought. I, I know the other Scrambler's very underpowered. I know I wouldn't like that because that definitely hasn't got enough power for what I'm used to. But this, yeah, it seems, it seems good. Right, back at Ducati. I can find the stand as well. Yeah, it looks good. Definitely is a good looking bike. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed this Scrambler 1100 review. Uh, been been fun really enjoyed it uh, looks good that's what I mean about the chrome I'm not sure where the chrome goes with the rest of the bike being matte silver but it does look good you can tweak it to whatever you want it to be I suppose so pretty cool all right guys take it easy and I'll see you in the next vid cheers